This video is brought to you by the Gigabyte GTX 960 G1 Gaming Graphics Card, featuring fan stop mode with intuitive visual indicator lights and flex display technology to easily connect up to four monitors. Click the link in the description for more information. Excellent! Welcome everyone to today's video. It's called The First Five, and I could actually make this into an ongoing video series if you guys enjoy it, so feedback is appreciated as always via comments, likes, or dislikes down in the comment, like, and dislike section down below. Now, in my opinion, there's nothing like the fresh feeling of a clean operating system installation. Whether it's a new build, you're reformatting, you're doing the most effective means of virus removal, uh, I have been doing this quite a bit. So for today's video, I'm going to tell you guys the first five things that I do after installing a new operating system, specifically Windows 8.1 in this scenario, but it also applies to Windows 7 for the most part. Now, since all of my viewers out there are pretty elite PC builders, I'm gonna make some assumptions so we can assume that it's a given that the first things you're actually going to do after Windows 7 or Windows 8 gets all installed is install the latest drivers for your hardware, uh, updating Windows Update to its latest Windows updatedness, and of course replacing Internet Explorer with Chrome or Firefox. There, that's much, much better. Of course, in this case, I also installed OBS so I could screen capture my first five things. So, moving on to the first thing that I do after that, which is to access folder options to turn off hide extensions for files of known type. I absolutely hate this. I have no idea why it exists at all. Oh sure, Windows, I'll just memorize every single tiny icon that a file could possibly have in order to easily distinguish between an exe and an ini file or a pdf and a png. While I'm here, I also turn on hidden file display and turn off hide empty drives because those things are also dumb in their default state. The second thing that I do is add a My Computer icon to the desktop. This is just an old habit of mine and I'm very accustomed to having it there. I right click the desktop, I go to Personalize, I choose Change Desktop Icons, and I select Computer. I'll also use Windows Explorer jump lists pretty frequently uh, since I've been using Windows 7 and Windows 8 just to access my computer or other file shortcuts. Uh, but having that my computer icon on the desktop too so I can right click it to access properties or computer management, I just find very handy. So I always do that. The third thing that I do is go to ninite.com, N-I-N-I-T-E, and I install these small and more useful programs that I will end up installing anyway. This varies based on what the computer is and what it's going to be used for, but I'll often add, for example, Firefox, FileZilla, Notepad++, uh, MediaMonkey, runtimes like Java and .NET, Foxit Reader. Uh, you can choose from a few popular and free antivirus apps as well as Malwarebytes and, of course, Steam. And then you get the little installer that installs them all at once, and then you can even rerun that installer in the future and it will update all of the apps that you already have installed to their most recent versions. It's beautiful. The fourth thing that I do is specific to Windows 8, but uh, I right-click on the taskbar, go to Properties, and I turn off the Windows 8 things that I do not like in the Navigation tab. This means turning off charms, turning off the top left application switchy thingy, and of course telling Windows 8 to go to the desktop instead of the Metro UI start menu. I also like choosing show my desktop background on start, which actually almost makes the Metro UI start menu bearable to use. If you want to totally get rid of Metro UI, I like to use Classic Shell. It's free and it's very customizable. The fifth thing that I do is to pretty up the joint a bit with some fresh wallpaper. I like scenic photography and my favorite website for that is interfacelift.com. I'll choose a selection of these beautiful images and download them to a wallpapers folder that I create in my documents. Then under personalization, I choose the desktop background option and I will direct the desktop backgrounds over to that folder. Uh, I have it change once a day and then if I add more images to that folder in the future, then Windows will automatically add them to the desktop background rotation. And that is all of my five things. Of course, there are other things that I would add to this list if the list was longer than a five item list. Most notably, after everything's set up perfectly, but before you install larger programs like video game installations on Steam or Adobe or the Office Suite, I would use the system image function, uh, which you can actually find under Windows 7 file recovery on Windows 8. Or if you're on Windows 7, it's under Backup and Restore. You can use that to create an image to restore back to in the future, and that will save you a lot of time and all the setup stuff if you ever decide to reformat your computer again. But I wanna know what your first five things are. Those annoying UI fixes and behavioral changes that you just have to do to a Windows install as soon as possible. Let me know in the comment section down below whilst you contemplate the finishing move that you wanna use on that like button and share this video. If you know anyone who you think might like it, check out my store to support my continued existence by buying a shirt like this one, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and as always, thanks for watching.